Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished professional from Wales, UK, Mr. Matthew Farmer. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Matthew is the founder and managing director of Emerging World. So, Matthew, before we talk about emerging world, tell me a little bit about your own journey in brief. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, well, I guess it, in many ways, when when I think about that, um, my business, Emerging World, is, is quite um, wrapped up into, into that because um, I, I think I had a an experience back in 2001. I was traveling around the world, having sort of finished... Um, or taken a pause from my first career mm -hmm. um, uh, before I undertook an MBA at ESA Business School in, in Barcelona. And I wanted to travel and sort of expand my horizons before uh, before undertaking the MBA. And I found myself in Mexico. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do when I was traveling, besides sort of learn a language and scuba dive and do lots of other exciting things, mm -hmm. um, was to do something kind of worthwhile um, with a charity. I had, I had no idea what that looked like, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do some form of, of service. And I ended up in Mexico working with a small organization that was providing um, loans to groups of women in mm -hmm. sort of semi-urban areas of, of, of Mexico right. using something which is much more familiar now as a term with microcredit and microfinance. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I found myself volunteering with this organization for six weeks with the task of uh, helping this organization understand how and if they would ever break even. That mm -hmm. was the basic mission. Um, and that experience in the end sort of changed, changed my life. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, it was a challenging experience. It was stretching, but it was ultimately very developmental and it was very rewarding. Mm. And it sparked in me the idea that um, it would be possible to set up an organization that provided opportunities for people with more skills and more talents than me to mm. go and use their skills to help different small businesses and nonprofits around the world. Mm. Um, and and that's, that was the seed of the idea. So, so in many ways, yeah, my, my life, I suppose, is up to that point from a working point of view mm -hmm. and then from that point forward. Um, amazing. So. Amazing. So uh, let's talk about emerging world. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what you do here. Yeah, so at emerging world, the easiest way to describe it is, is in terms of, of, of how we work with, mm -hmm. with, with our clients. So um our clients are uh, typically large global organizations mm. and we provide experiences to their people mm. in which they um, use their skills and broader life experience mm. to support um, other organizations, usually in different parts of the world that are addressing um, particular uh, areas of, of social concern, social or environmental concern. Mm. Um, so that might be a group of people on a talent program in a technology company going to um, India or an African country and working with local nonprofits and, and, and government organizations. Mm. Or it might be an individual. It could be based anywhere in the world. Singapore, for example, mm. going over and working and using supporting a marketing plan, for example, mm. uh, for, for an organization in, in North America. So um, those are the kinds of experiences. But. Companies will typically do them with kind of three um, drivers in mind, mm -hmm. those three three areas of, of value. One is about the development of their people, typically their, their leaders, maybe senior leaders or maybe sort of more, more junior leaders. Mm -hmm. Or they do it as part of um, an employee engagement and um, community impact drive. So mm -hmm. it might be some form of skills-based corporate volunteering initiative. Mm -hmm. um, or else they will do it, and this is a more sort of nascent area of our work, as part of a drive to increase the diversity, inclusion, and belonging mm -hmm. that exists and manifests within their organization. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's probably the, the easiest way to sort of describe yeah, what we do. And, and our role is really to facilitate all of that and, and to make that happen. Amazing. And uh, you also talk about uh, immersive learning. Mm. How does immersive learning plug into the emerging world? And 
help me understand how you define immersing, immersive learning. Yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, thanks for the question. Um, so, so I think um, you know we use the the idea of immersive learning to sort mm-hmm. of characterize an experience in which you are you know, immersed, mm-hmm. um, head, heart, soul, in a particular experience, right. um, and 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 the impact that that can have on you mm-hmm. as an individual. Um, so, in in a huge amount of our work people are working on real problems and challenges that Mm -hmm. are being faced by other people. And and in order to be successful in in supporting those other people with um, those particular challenges, Mm -hmm. you really have to step into their world. Um, It's not enough just to listen or to hear or to observe. When you start Mm -hmm. rolling up your sleeves and actually working on other people's challenges, Mm -hmm. it's a different level of empathy and understanding Mm. that you um, develop, but also need to be able to um, develop to be successful in, in that particular in that particular work. So, mm-hmm. so we talk about the power of the potential of that experience to mm-hmm. shift the way that people think. Um, so to they may you know, take on a new mindset, mm-hmm. a different way of thinking. Um, they may see things that they hadn't seen before. Um, mm-hmm. They may see and understand things about themselves that they hadn't appreciated right. when they're in their sort of normal day-to-day environment. Mm. And it's those kinds of experiences from a personal point of view that um, yeah, that we try and accentuate, direct and support through, through the experiences that we provide. Mm. And when you talk about, uh, you know, the immersive learning having the power to, or the potential to help leaders make fundamental shifts, mm. Uh, help me understand this and give me an example if possible. Yeah. Um, so um, I guess, you know, it's it's that profound whole body experience that um, we um, we believe you know, creates the, the, the shift um, for, for, for somebody. Um, and, and it's quite hard often to, to shift in, in your normal day to day. You know, you're too busy, particularly when you're working for a large company, to really change perspective, to really see things differently. So if you can create a space, and you can do it virtually, but even better, you know, if you can do that in in person, Mm. in order to um, open people up to those possibilities and help them discover those things, Mm. then that can be um, really profound. So, you know, an example that that comes to mind is quite quite recent, because I I just recently heard back from an individual. We had a uh, particularly... Uh, senior finance professional inside Microsoft. And that individual um, had um, gone to uh, Peru Mm -hmm. as part of a cohort experience that we Mm -hmm. designed for for, uh, an executive development program. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, the experience, um, I think, really shifted just the way that he thought about Mm -hmm. developing and emerging markets, Mm -hmm. Um, really helped him think differently uh, about the kinds of um, solutions um, that will work in, in in that kind of environment, mm. and and actually this particular individual was was of Indian origin, mm-hmm. uh, and and so it's not that um, that kind of context mm. would be unfamiliar to him, but right. having worked for a large global corporation for a substantial period of time mm. and be very much focused with this is how we do things in in North America as a well, as a North American headquartered global company, mm-hmm. the idea that consumers, the business operating environment um, might be different in a different environment. And the way to deal with that would require different ways of thinking mm-hmm. was, was really mind opening. And, and we, you know, we heard from him a few a few months afterwards mm-hmm. about the experience and, you know, he talked about it in very positive terms. This, this experience is about 10 years ago. And, and he mentioned um, to a colleague of mine just the other day how that experience had really shifted and changed the way that he looks at things. And he Mm. subsequently went on, became a CEO of a company, took it to IPO, moved on, Mm. now advising several business schools in in the US on on what their curriculum could be. And and, Mm. um, so it was really interesting to hear that that paradigm shift had still stretched with him. So so that's one example, you know, and that was very much about the market place or the Mm. place where the individual is. But sometimes it's more fundamental around that. It's like about uh, sort of more fundamental in terms of how you show up, about mm. who you are, how you engage with other people. 
which in your day to day, Ashutosh, can be quite hard mm. to, to change or to shift. You know, just mm. things are done in the way that they're done. But when you're in a different context, working with different people, mm. then the idea that you might you know, ask different kinds of questions, that you might need to take a back seat rather than taking a driving role, right. things can be really quite profound for people. So, so yeah. Does that, does that help? To, no, no, it to, makes, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And my next question, therefore, is that what are some of the more effective technologies and tools uh, mm. that you are using to create uh, immersive learning experiences? Yeah, fantastic. Well, I mean, yeah, up until um, the pandemic, uh, then you know, 95% of the experiences that we facilitated or helped to facilitate um, mm. would, would have been um, had a fundamental in-person element. And then clearly for a couple of years, that was pretty much um, impossible. Mm. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, we transitioned all of our work into virtual experiences. Um, and so with our focus in virtual experiences is instead of taking people out to go and mm. see and be exposed and immersed in different environments mm. is to really bring the outside in so how do we use platforms like this like zoom or teams or things like mural mm. and miro mm. to create an experience in which we can bring the in, outside into a particular mm -hmm. space mm. um and, and so that, that's been a focus of, of our work over the last couple of years and now you know we've got a uh yeah, blended hybrid experiences that cover you know the virtual and um uh and in-person environment so, so that's you know that's the sort of practical technology point mm. but i think from our research um and we do sort of cross-company research mm -hmm. um and have been doing for the last sort of 10 years or so what's really interesting from mm. that is that it's what happens after the experience right that is often the primary mm. contributor to the effectiveness of that experience from a participant point of view. Mm. So um, uh, when an individual comes back having had a profound experience, mm. it's very tempting for a company to say, brilliant, you have that experience, lovely, now so let's get back on with stuff. Mm. You know? and, and you know that individual might have a lot of passion, a new way of looking at things, but unless the company does something to support them listens to them mm. um, provides opportunities perhaps or fertile ground at least on which they can apply that learning right and perhaps that individual is supported to implement that learning mm. in, a, in an appropriate mm. way through their line manager through external coaches whatever it might be yeah then yeah a lot of the value of that experience can be lost mm. so you know the tempting thing is always think about preparing for the experience and having the experience not thinking about what happens afterwards. Mm. But like within any learning experience, unless you have the opportunity to apply it, unless you can um, integrate it into your your work and your life, mm. then um, yeah, the value becomes very dissipated. Um, it's sometimes there, but it becomes quite, quite dissipated. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And uh, what would you say are some of the challenges that you are faced with when you get into uh, an immersive learn, you know, immersive learning program for corporations or individuals. Yeah, um, so that's um, that's a good. I'd say that the the most difficult challenge is is more about getting um, the full company aligned mm -hmm. by undertaking the experience. So I think intuitively, if I was to ask you, for example, what was the what did you learn most from in your life? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to guess, Ashutosh, that it won't mm -hmm. be a training course. Correct. It'll have been an experience of some kind Absolutely. of a situation that you've been put in. Right? Absolutely right. So, so what we're trying to do within within our experiences is, is give um, is give people those kinds of experiences, but but it's within a space that an organisation might call mm -hmm. a training or a learning program or a corporate volunteering experience. Mm -hmm. And yet there are ways that people think about these things mm. based on perhaps their own education or their own experiences of courses that, that make it difficult for them to comprehend that actually this is a really effective way of, 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 of doing something. Mm. So, you know, you'll often get typical, um, I say sort of typical, I mean, it's, it's understandable as well, but um, just pushback from different mm. stakeholders and organizations saying, well, you can't be away for a period of time in doing that or you know what are the core learning outcomes or why don't we use an, 
a business school with a really established name for doing this rather mm. than, you know, a, a smaller consultancy, you know, because mm. everybody knows INSEAD or, you know, Harvard, but, you know, not everybody knows Emerging World, for example. Mm. Um, so I think the bigger challenge is, is there. And then actually when, when you're implementing the program, um, what you want to do is have that environment in place in the organization that supports the individual. So, you know, you want you need a good executive sponsor mm -hmm. um, who's already behind the program. You need um, program managers or you know, your counterparts inside organizations that, that really want to make this happen mm -hmm. um, because it requires, you know, um, time. It's not just a plug and play thing. Correct. Yeah, it's quite a, 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 a customized piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to be able to support people right through the journey. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, people's um, bias for action and to move on to the next thing means that you know, you're not always supported to be able to have the space in the organizations that shift the mindset. So you're in this kind of um, paradox of in, in this complex world in which we're living, that what people really need is some space to be able to think differently about the kinds of challenges that they're facing in order to be able to address them in new and different ways. Mm. But a pressure to be able to do things really quickly, really fast, and in the way that we've always done them, mm. that doesn't really enable people to have that space. Well, and that's the tension that you're trying to manage. Mm. So, you know, when you are trying to create a lot of these immersive experiences, do you see these new technologies like the metaverse uh, actually being able to create incredible experiences for our avatars in 3D? In 3, in 3D? No, I think it's, it's a, fa a fascinating um, prospect, isn't it? I mean, it, it, it is a fascinating prospect. And, and yeah, if there are ways in which you can reduce um, the carbon that you're emitting by, particularly in, in experiences that require travel, mm -hmm. you know, by doing something virtually, or you can enable people to have those experiences, you know, virtually in, in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful, um, that's a wonderful idea. But what is, I think, fundamental in our concept around immersive learning is that people are working on a on a real challenge and a real problem that has genuine consequences mm. for for people. So at the same time as learning huge amounts about themselves, part of the reason they're so compelling is you're actually making a difference mm. for people who um, want your help and may well need your help and support. So. You know, Johnson and Johnson, for example, is is one of the organisations we provide. We've got a massive commitment about supporting primary health care at workers around the world. Yep. Um, you know, the work that they do on their programs is, is compelling, valuable stuff that supports health care. People are very vulnerable and very marginalized around the world. That compels people in our experiences. It gives them a real um, output that's worth mm. fighting for. Mm. Um, now, simulations and virtual things can have a great way of helping to set context perhaps or, or give people an understanding maybe i could walk around a village in kenya you know in a virtual reality headset and get a sense of what the life is but if i'm not working on a real challenge that makes a real difference to a human's life if i don't have that human connection with somebody i don't think right. that experience is going to be correct. real correct well said and uh, the other question that i had was that do you see any ethical and privacy concerns associated with this kind of learning or not really. I mean, you know. Yeah, not really. I mean, I, I sort of, um, yeah, I, I sort of, I struggle to see what they would be beyond the usual of, of you know, just needing to keep people's data um, safe. And and I, I suppose, I suppose, as I think about it, there's yeah, you know, sometimes a concern that if people in perhaps a position of power mm -hmm. are helping other people who have less power. It needs to be done in equitable terms. Correct. Otherwise, you're sort of perpetuating a, a power dynamic that might not be so mm -hmm. healthy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we try to do within our experiences is create, um, we have a principle actually around mm -hmm. reciprocal learning. Mm -hmm. so, so the idea is that individuals go to contribute their skills and experiences, but they also go to learn. And that puts the relationship that they might have mm -hmm. with uh, an organization that they're supporting on a much more equitable, on much more equitable terms, mm -hmm. because they're both giving to each other in, 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 in that, um, in that context. So, so you take away that 
that that side of things that is something to be yeah mindful of mm. uh and i suppose that that does have yeah an ethical consideration that, that that's important it's not apparently obvious to to some people who just think well i just want to go off and do good you know my mm. intentions are good but they don't see the systemic context of 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 that and of course there's been in the last sort of 10 years particularly you know the term of of you know white savior so mm. the idea of somebody from European or North American extraction going to somebody in the global south and helping mm. and kind of what that sort of says and, and what that looks like and the sort of situation that that perpetuates mm. um and so there's been a lot of pushback around that mm. um and um yeah I think it's something we've always tried to be cognizant of but I think you also you know you you need to ensure that mm. um that you are attuned to this as well and you're attuned to your own biases when you look at this at this stuff i mean Correct. as as as, it, as enlightened as i might want to feel about mm. the kind of work we do we have to understand that you know my own life my own um experiences um and who i am and how i identify will impact you know the decisions i make and and and, and the way that i look at the world mm. so yeah as 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 a as a leader myself and in supporting other leaders to be able to you know, have experiences that that support the kind of world that we we want to live in, mm. um, we need to be open to those those um, perspectives that that challenge the way that we we think. Mm. Interesting. Time for one more question, uh, Matthew. And this is for the many, many, many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own, un, uh, you know, amazing understanding of so many different types of learnings, and having worked with so many different organizations around the world, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from mm. your own learnings and from our conversation? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, so. I think the first is um, about it's not about being curious mm -hmm. and being comfortable in not knowing the answer. Mm. Uh, so there's there's a skill I think and a quality that underpins that, which mm. is around being able to lead with questions or understand mm. how questions can take you forward. But people mm. often feel uncomfortable. Mm. asking questions for all sorts of different reasons so if you're uncomfortable with not knowing the answer but you're mm. curious and um, comfortable and skilled at asking questions i think mm. that's a great quality mm. that anyone can have in a world Correct. that's changing so fast that the learning of the past you kind of have to keep questioning whether it's still relevant for the future so i, I think Correct. that's one i think the second speaks to the point we we just spoke around which is trying to Clock your own biases. Mm. Understand that your perspective is is a perspective in looking at the world. Mm. Do what you can to educate yourself in the fact that to, to understand where your perspective is coming from, mm. but to continually test and refine those perspectives mm. by listening to others and understanding that you know you may be you may be different. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think that's the second. I, the third. Um, but for me, I mean, it's cultural curiosity is, mm -hmm. is um, I suppose, it's something that I, I naturally have. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's just so valuable and so rich. There are so mm -hmm. many people that you can learn from. Mm -hmm. There's so many perspectives that are interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if, if cultural curiosity, if you can foster that mm -hmm. um, inside of yourself, um, you know, so, there's so much to learn and discover. Um, so I, I think it's a great. Yeah, great quality to to have in your in your in yourself. And if if you don't have it, um, you know, see what you can do to um, to stimulate it. Fascinating. And on that note, Matthew, and your three amazing lessons: be curious, and be comfortable in not knowing the answer. This is an amazing statement. Be comfortable in not not knowing the answer. Very powerful. Uh, thank you. The second one you sent was your learn to understand your own perspective and keep testing your perspective by listening to others and refining your own perspective. And third one, you talked about the culture of curiosity. Um, there are so many people to learn from. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey, about the emerging world, 
And thank you for speaking to me at such length about immersive learning. Thank you again. Well, thank you for the appearance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.